Guys, um, so this is Shelby with the Rogers Public Library. Um, this week for Full Steam Ahead, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, how we organize and classify living organisms, right? So this is um, broadly called taxonomy, right? Um, and, you know, we can group together organisms on really um, big levels, like what type of cells they have, and we can also group them together on very specific levels. Like if we want to talk about um, crocodilians or want to talk about primates, right? Like specific groups of animals that share characteristics. Um, and for an example of this, um, if we're going to talk about people, right? So we're in the domain eukaryota, then beneath that animalia, chordata, mammalia, primate, amenity, um, homo and sapiens, right? So um, these bolded terms, they're called um, taxa, which is a plural form of taxon, right? Um, so, um, and then the different levels are ranks, right? So at the very lowest rank as species, right, we're sapiens, um, and we're in the genus Homo, so, right, um, which in includes um, other thing, uh, other organisms that are a lot like us, that were very human-ish, um, but not quite the way that we are, right? Um, and so this whole um, system of or classifying living things um, and the specific names that come along with it were kind of invented by a scientist named Carl Linnaeus in the 18th century. Um, and specifically, he came up with the system of using two names for living things. So for instance, um, Homo sapiens or Canis familiaris or um, Felis catus, right? So that's humans and cats and, and dogs and cats, right? And this is specifically, specifically called binomial nomenclature, right? So that's it's a long word, but it just means using two names to name things. That's what binomial means, um, as two names. Um, yeah, right. So, but when Linnaeus was coming up with all of this stuff, he didn't have all the tools and knowledge that we have now, right? He didn't really know a lot about evolution, and he didn't know a lot about, um, like, um, genetics or, any, or DNA or any of that stuff. Um, so what he did when he was trying to classify things, he would base them on their appearance, right? Um, and sometimes this works really well. So for instance, if we have these two dice, we have an owl and a penguin, right? They both have wings, they both have beaks, um, and they both have feathers. So, right, so that's a lot in common, um, just on the surface level. And say, well, maybe these two guys, if they have all these features in common, they're related, right? And so we say they are, they're in a group called mammals. Um, but, and then we have this guy, right? He's a snake, um, and snakes have scales, um, and they're cold-blooded, um, and they live on land, right, for the most part. Um, and so we can lift, lift, uh, lump this guy together with things like lizards and crocodiles um, and say these are reptiles, right? Um, and this works really well if you're just going on the appearances of things. Um, but if you actually look at, um, if you use more advanced methods, if you... Um, do stuff like genetic sequencing where you look at DNA of specific organisms, what you'll find is that this doesn't really work because there are some um, reptiles that are more closely related to birds, like for instance, crocodiles are um, really closely related to birds um, compared with other reptiles, right? And I have a little picture of this. This is called an evolutionary tree, right? So we can see Avis, which is birds, and Crocodilia. So they're all here together. And then you have all these other groups that are reptiles. And if you look at the blue part, right? So it's, this is supposed to be reptiles, this yellow part. But when we say reptiles, we mainly just use, mean the blue part. I um, mean, that's problematic, right? We call this a paraphyletic um, ta uh, taxa or taxon, right? Um, and that's kind of... It's um, a problem because, you know, it's not 100% accurate and it's kind of arbitrary, right? And we want it, when we try to organize things using science, we want it to be as scientific as possible. So maybe a better way of looking at things would be grouping these three things all together um, if we're going to talk about reptiles as a whole. But we can also just talk about birds as a whole, right? Um, because birds are what's called a clade. Right, and a clade is a specific type of taxon um, where it's nice and orderly instead of being kind of a weirdo with a big chunk cake, chunk taken out of it. Um, so th and that's that's you know a reason that we use things like genetics when we talk about organizing animals. 
And um, there's something else to keep in mind, which is um, convergent evolution, right? So we look at um, we look at a penguin and we look at a whale. They both have things that look like flippers, right? Um, that they used to swim through water. Um, and if we look at something like a dolphin and a shark, they even look more similar, but they're not, right? Um, and the reason they do is because they live in similar environments, right? Both these guys need to be able to swim very well um, to survive in the ocean, and the same with sharks and dolphins, right? And that's what convergent evolution is, right? Um, is animals pick up traits because they live in the same environments, not because they share a common ancestor. Um, and actually, whales are really closely related. They're mammals, and they're closely related to cows, right? So that's kind of weird. Um, and we can see, if we look at this, if we look, this is um, what the skeleton inside of a whale's flipper looks like, right? So it actually has a hand in there, which is weird to think about. Um, but it's just like our hands, you know, the bones in our hands. Um, and so what this is, the relationship between the, the bone structure in a whale's hand and between our hands, these are called, this is called um, homology, right? So um, they look similar structurally because we share a common ancestor. Um, whereas the, the opposite of this is analogy, right? Is where they look similar superficially on the surface because they same, share a same purpose, right? Um, so penguins and whales use their flippers to get through the water. And so they look the same, even if they don't have a common ancestor. Um, but probably the biggest example of this in nature is called carcinization. Um, and this comes from the Latin name for crabs, right? So if we look at all these different crabs. We have a king crab, a gray swimming crab, a porcelain crab, a hairy stone crab, and a coconut crab. They all look really, really similar, right? Um, they have the same kind of circular um, squat body, and then they have the legs coming out and the big claws in the front, right? Um, but the thing is, these, they're, they're kind of related to each other. They're all um, what are called decapods, um, which means they have 10 feet. Um, but they evolved their characteristics separately, right? Um, they live in similar environments on, uh, or they evolved on the bottom of the ocean, right? Um, and this body shape is just really good at surviving in that environment. So they all kind of develop the same characteristics over time, um, even though they're not super related to each other. So um, the activity, uh, the experiment and the craft this week are kind of lumped into one, um, right? So basically what I did is I tried to do an observation, right? So I um, just paid attention to animals I saw in real life, right? So there's stuff like dog and cat. I have um, a dog and a cat in my house and my pets. Um, and then there's a, a black vulture. I see these guys on the side of the road sometime. And then there's some other guys that are different that I see here at the library. Right? We have a fish tank here and we have clownfish and anemone and hermit crabs in there as well. Right? And I just tried to draw pictures of them. Some of them turned out really well. I think this one turned out really good. And I think this one turned out really good too. Um, some of them not so much. But, you know, and so I, I just paid attention and I tried to list the different characteristics of them, right? Um, so if I was gonna do this, I would say, well, these guys go together because they both have fur. Um, and then birds are somewhere a little bit closer because um, they have feathers and because they live on land, whereas these guys all live in the water. Um, but fish and hermit crabs and anemones, well, these are all really different. Um, if I was just looking at an anemone by itself and I didn't know any better, I would think it was a plant. Um, but it's not. It's actually really closely related to jellyfish, um, which is another reason that, you know, it's not, you can't just look at things to figure out what they are. You got to kind of examine them more closely. Um, and used a lot of different tools to do that. Um, but I hope you guys learned something this week, and I hope you have fun, and I'll see you next Thursday.